Right? Good. Father God, I just thank you. I praise you, Father, for this word. I thank you, Lord, this word goes out. Father, it even pierced the very marrow of our bones, what your word says and what you told us, Lord. And Lord, you said in your word, Father, that our ears need to be opened by the Spirit of God to hear what your Spirit is saying to each one of us. So I pray this morning as I minister and preach this word. I pray this morning that the power of your Holy Spirit will be able to minister with those who need you to heal them, to help them, wherever they're at in you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, I'm I, 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 dealing with this. Oh, so. And that, after that, he talked about it. He said, that is a lot of Christians here are here or outside of this room right here this morning are just hearing or just getting by this is not God's will for your life just to get by. It's not that God's will that you only hear God's word when you come here on Sunday morning. It's not God's will that you don't listen to praise and worship music when you're not here. Those are all the things that God wants us to do so that we can be more powerful in our lives. Many of you want to hear from the Holy Ghost. Well, if you're not, if you're not listening to praise and worship, if you're not reading your word, it's kind of hard to hear from the Holy Spirit. When you start doing those kind of things, the Holy Spirit will begin to deal with you. So I pray this morning that everybody out here, your spiritual ears will be open today to hear the Word of God. It's important. But remember, all this other stuff, that's not God's will for your life. God's will for our lives be, but to be in His perfect will is to walk and talk with Him every part of our life. Walk and talk with Him. Pray. Seeing the results of the fruits in our lives. Paul was talking to his church much like me this morning. And this is what he had to say. Chapter, chapter 5 of Ephesians. Starting in verse 1. I'm going to go all the way to verse 33. Everybody there say amen? amen. All right, good. Therefore, be imitators of God. Boy, he starts out with a powerful thing, doesn't he, right there? We're to imitate God. That means we're to imitate his word. That's what it means. As beloved children, and walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us and offered his sacrifice to God as a regular Roman. But immorality or any impurity or greed must not even be named among us. Are you hearing that? That means it shouldn't even it shouldn't be named around us. In other words, one of your friends can't say this about you. Come on now. Purity or greed must not even be named among you as is proper among saints. And there must be no filthiness, no silly talk, or coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving thanks. Sometimes as husband and wife, we get into a mode where, where we're, where we're kind of, you know, you know, I got you this time, I got you that time. You know what I'm talking about? That shouldn't be named among us, guys. That's not good for our marriage. Maybe fun, maybe funny, but really not good for us in, in, internally. It is not good for us. Say, man, serving Christ is terrible. No, serving Christ is a blessing. Amen? Amen? Which is not fitting. But rather give, giving, rather than giving thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ. For this you know with certainty. Listen to it. For you know with certainty that no immoral or impure person or covetous man who is an adulterer has an inheritance in the kingdom of God. Or another powerful message. That stuff you're doing over here, you talked about, it's more than that. You go read that more, there's more in there. But if you read that, you'll realize some things and go and look at, man, I, I got some things I need to change. You know? I want to go to heaven. I want to be on that, that, that flight. First flight or second flight. I don't care which flight. I want to be on that flight to heaven. How many say amen to that? We all want to go to heaven. But are we doing the things that God's asking us to do to get there? Sometimes it's grace that's being preached out there, the ultimate grace that, that you can be saved and still do all the ugly things you do in the world. That's a life in the pit of hell. Period. That was not what grace was meant to do. 
Verse 6. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Well, I love that scripture right there. The wrath of God. If you're in God, if you love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, like he says, and you're in God, truly in, in, the, in the presence of God, that wrath, you'll not see it. You may see it on people, but you're not going to see it in your own self. Does that make sense? Because you're obedient, not disobedient to the Word of God. Verse 7, Therefore do not be partakers with them, for you were formerly in darkness, but now you're in the light, in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists of all goodness and righteousness and truth. Verse 10, Trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Are y'all trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord? If you don't read your word, you'll never know. Don't trust me up here. Read it for yourself. Amen? Amen. Verse 11. Thank you, brother. Verse 11. Thank you, Lord. Verse 11. Do not participate in the unfruitful deeds for it is disgraceful even to speak of these things which are done by them in secret. Oh, boy, boy. Did you hear that? We try to do things in secret where they were fooling everybody else. But God knows all things. That's why he said, I know all things. You can't hide it from them. You can hide it from people, but you can't hide it from God. It can't be done. Sometimes you want to. You're going to bury your head, you know, in the sand sometimes. But God has forgiveness out there. He said, there shall not be no condemnation to those who are in Christ. So you're not going to be condemned for your sin. You're going to be forgiven if you ask for it. You're going to be forgiven. That's how good a God He is. He forgives us of our ugly sins. If you've been working and walking in the Lord, what happens is as you walk in the Lord, your life is more sinless than it used to be. There's less sins coming into your life. Does that make sense? As you grow, as you go in the Lord and move forward in the Lord, then you're not going to do those things. So your life becomes where the fact is you don't, you, you're not praying all the time about being, being forgiven. You're not spending all your time on that. Amen? Verse 12. Uh, For it is disgraceful even be speaking of these things which are done in them in secret. But all things become visible. Hear that? All things become visible. When they are exposed by the light. For everything that becomes visible is light. For this reason it says, Wake up, you sleeper. That's talking about spirit sleep. Wake up, you sleeper. I'm talking about a nap. Wake up, you, you, you sleeper. And arise from the dead. And Christ will shine upon you. All he's asking us to do is get on our face before him and ask for forgiveness for everything. Some of us got stuff we're holding on to that's 20 years old. Come on now. 10 years old. You don't want to let it go because you don't want to go apologize to somebody. Whatever it may be. And, and all of that, you're, you, the Bible says that, that uh, in the Word of God it tells us that if we're not willing to forgive somebody, then Jesus is not willing to forgive us. Are you hearing me? That's powerful. Powerful. Verse 15. Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise. Making the most of your time while you're here. That's all about studying, reading the Word, so that you can go out and minister to people. That's what they're talking about. So you can go minister. Our number one job is what? To go get the lost. That's our number one job here. That's why we're here preaching and teaching, and that's supposed to bring you a place where you know the Word, so you can go out there and talk to those people. Ask the Lord to give you boldness in the line. You'd be surprised what happens if you truly mean it. <laughs> You'd be talking to everybody about Jesus. Making most of your time because the days are evil. Verse 17. So then do not, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. 18. Do not get drunk with wine. With wine, for that is dispensation. But be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another. In Psalm, listen to that. We're speaking to one another when we're gathered together like this. 
like we do our handshake and our hugs and luggage and all that good stuff. We need to be speaking to those people. It, it's prophecy. When you walk up to somebody and say, you're blessed and highly favored. You know what? That you're speaking that out. That's, a, that, that's what God wants us to do. Speaking to people's lives. Sometimes, you know why we don't? Because we're sitting there going, I need it. I need it. Come on now, you hear what I'm saying? I need it. So why would I give it to anybody? And that's why most people don't minister to our God. Because too many, I, 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 when they go, when they go to the prayer room, it's all about them, and it'll be all about Him. Period. Well, we, he's got, he's got room in there for you to talk to Him about your sins. But sometimes we just lavish over the fact, well, God's not blessing me. Well, God's not healing me. Well, God, God's not doing. Not God's not doing. But what are you doing? <laughs> Come on now. Are you reading? Are you studying? Are you being faithful to God? So as I talked about, we're in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs. That's what we do for praise and worship. worship. Singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God. Even the Father and be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. Verse 22. Wives, be subject to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is the head of the church. He himself being a savior of the body, but as the church is subject to Christ, so also the wives ought to be to their husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wives. Just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. Do you hear that, man? We're to, we're, to, we're to love our wives to the point we're willing to give ourselves up for you. Come on now. Men, we got it rougher than the women, okay? I will say that, okay? We do. Because we're to treat our women just like Christ did in the church. We see God rapping one day, you know, hollering, whatever. You're supposed to be gentle. <laughs> You're supposed to be gentle to go to that subject gently. Hey, look, I don't need to holler. You know what I mean? That's what it's supposed to be. So the men have it much, much harder than the women do. So 26, so that he might sanctify her. Sanctify her, his wife. Woo. Having cleansed her by the washing of the water. What's that mean? By washing of the water. Wouldn't, it, wouldn't hurt you to do a little foot washing at home. You know what I mean? That'd be cool. You come to your wife and just give her a foot packet. Come here, let's go. Let's pray. And let's do a foot washing together. That is powerful, you guys. I'm telling you. It's humbling too, okay? I don't like know what touching my feet. You know, it's humbling. Most of the time they stink, so I don't want them to be touching. But we're to do that, men. And we're supposed to wash of water with the word. In other words, we're supposed to speak over your wife the word of God. Every day. Speak over her. Memorize some scripture. Before you leave for work. If she wants to sleep in, let her sleep in. Go over and pray it anyway. Even if she's asleep, pray it in her today. And she gets mad, you get her up, that's her problem. It is. I'm just saying. That he might present himself, the, the church in all his glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Look what God's asking of us men. Look, come on here. But that she would be holy and blameless. Husbands, you ought to also love their love their own wives. Don't be having two wives. That's not that's illegal now. I don't know about you, but I can't handle one. <laughs> Husbands ought to also love their own wives as they, their own body. He who loves his own wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it. Just as Christ also does the church. Verse 30, because we are members of this, his, his body. Verse 31, for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife and the two shall become one. 
I know sometimes people, especially mother-in-laws, they get involved in your life. You gotta tell them. Go. That's my wife. You know what I mean? Sometimes them they do. Mother-in-law gets out in the middle of the marriage, tries to stir up trouble. If that's the problem, then you need to talk to her. Just sit down and talk to her. I can't have that in my house. Amen? Verse 32. This is where it gets interesting. The mystery is great. We got to study the word out so we understand the mystery here. This is a mystery. And if you pray to the Holy Spirit on a regular basis, you're going to get that answer to that mystery. You're going to know what that mystery is, guys. He, he, he's challenging you to study the word right there. The mystery is great. He's challenging each one of us to read the word so we can find out what the mystery is. That's cool. Okay. But I am speaking with reference to Christ the church. Nevertheless, in each individual among you also to love his own wife, even as himself. And the wife must see to it that she respect her husband. We live in a hard, dark world right now. Very dark. A, dark, a world that is dominated, driven by sin. Let me stop and say something. Now you'll understand a little better than I get preaching here. The Bible says that we, we are in God's world. As you, be, you become saved, you're part of Him, His world. But the Bible shows in here very carefully. There's another world. It's called, it's called the world, which is the devil's world, which is here on earth. He has limited powers. Very limited. But he still goes about making dark things happen. So if you're out here sinning like that, do you realize you're part of that same world? Hear me. Are you hearing me? It's the God's truth, I'm telling you. It came to me this morning, I'm going, oh my God. Two little girls down on the border. Eight years old each, they found them. They had been raped over and over. Did you realize if you're in the world, living in the world, you're part of that same thing, guys? Woo! I know that's heavy, but it's reality. You either, you're either in God's world or you're in this world. Take the one. So if you're acting like this world, then you're part of this world, which is all the crap you see, all the killings, all the stabbings, all the shootings. You're a part of that. Because anything that happens in God's world, we're part of that, ain't we? Come on, hear me. Pretty powerful, ain't it? Very strong. A world that is dominated and driven by sin. In the midst of the darkness and depravity, God has redeemed a people. Amen. We're redeemed. He has redeemed a people that He expects to be different. He expects you to be different than the world. The scripture talks all about it. Hang on, I got a scripture over here, I think. I'm supposed to be talking about it. I got another one over here. Listen right here. Y'all know the scripture by heart. It's uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I've preached on it many times. Therefore, if anyone is in sin, sin. <laughs> For therefore, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, <laughs> in, that right here, in Christ, you hear me? Are you on Christ this morning? Amen. He is a new creature. You know, all the old things you used to do, you know, gossip, put stuff on text you ain't supposed to do. Those things are all gone because he says here you're a new creature. The old things have passed away. So the reason is when you get out here and get saved and you give your heart to Jesus and you truly mend in your heart, you're saved. You'll not want to do these things no more. Now you probably, after you get saved, you might do a few things. You're going to have to get rid of them yourself. you have to work on it. Ask God to help you. You're going to get rid of all of them. New, new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. Now all these things are from God who is reconciled us to himself, to Christ, who gave us the ministry of reconciliation. I love that passage of Scripture. Namely that God was in Christ, reconciling the word to himself, not counting their trespasses against him, and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Do you hear that? We, we, we as born again believers. We already have a ministry. It's called the Ministry of Reconciliation. 
It's right, what that means is you're going to go out and, and preach to people. You're going to talk to people and bring them into the house of the Lord. In part, in part that's what that means. There's some more to it. I ain't got time to get into it this morning. He has redeemed the people that he expects to be different. He has redeemed the people he has empowered to be different. Notice that empowered. How that empowerment come? Through the Holy Ghost. I got I gotta pop your bubble right here. Hear me. Jesus is not living here. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. The Holy Ghost lives here inside of us. Jesus is sitting up there at the right hand of the Father. Someday he's gonna come back and he's gonna get us his bride. If you're part of the, the part of the kingdom, he gonna come get you. How many ready for that? Oh God, I'm ready. I'm ready so bad. <laughs> so bad. This is that he redeemed us to have power. He redeemed us so that we can be different. We're not to look like the world. How are we ever going to reach the people in the world if we look like them? We act like them. We got fruits of the world. How are you ever going to minister to somebody if you don't look like the you don't look like Christ? You ain't going to. If you look like the world, they're going to say, hey, come on in, man. Next thing you know, they're cursing a little bit. Next thing you know, you're cursing with them. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that sleeps and the one that is dead has something in common. Spiritually speaking now, they have both lost control of their conscience and activity and they have become insensitive to things happening around them. Very good. So many things that they could not tolerate or they couldn't cope with it when awakened or alive can easily be done and performed around or with them without their awareness. The loss of sensitivity and consciousness differ in degree of extent in that it is very easy for one to wake out of the sleep that to arise from the dead. Even though both are possible. The Bible's teaching us here that though those of us who are walking in sin and act like you're living like the Lord, you got you got everybody fooled. The Bible teaches us that you're the hardest one to come to Christ. Because you found a comfort place. You found a comfort place. You want to preach up here, the Holy Spirit probably dealt with you 10, 15 times at least, and you won't come forward for nothing. You're not going to come up here. You're afraid. You're, you, you don't want everybody to know that you were sinning. Come on now. The <laughs> Bible says we all sin and come short of the glory. But forgiveness is how we get it took care of. That's what we're talking about there. When we become spiritually insensitive to unconscious of what our true identity in Christ, our expected attitude, character, and lifestyle from the Word of God, When we, become, when we become spiritually sensitive, this is what happens. We find out where our true identity in Christ. Find out who you are. Our expected attitudes, character, and lifestyle from the Word of God. Our restrictions in behavior, relationships, involvement by the Word of God. Thank you, Father. Oh, God, thank you so much. Okay. Or about the God's <clears throat> We're described as someone that is spiritually sleeping. We are described as someone that is spiritually sleeping or someone that is spiritually dead, depending on the degree and extent in which we have gone. How far have you gone back? Was there a day that you were praising to God, worshiping Him everywhere you went? I mean, that day was there. I mean, you were going after. I mean, you had going out. You was you were on fire for God. What happened to you? What happened to you? Are you hearing me? What happened to you? I'd like to say what, what in the world happened to you. Because that world is probably what happened to you. More than likely. The world got you. You let it get you. The scriptures we read is all about change. It is designed to teach us that we are different from the world around us. And since we are different, we should live our lives that are different. 
Hear me, church. You need to live a life that's different than the world. If you got a bunch of worldly things in your life, you know, little bit picky things, you need to get rid of them. You need to get rid of them. Or to be different. The simple truth is that believers should be different from those who do not know the Lord. A brief review of the first eight verses of this chapter clearly demonstrates the truth. Verse 1, we are commanded to live like God. You hear that? This is the beginning of our scriptures, verse 1. In verse 2, we are commanded to love like God. Verse 3 through 7, we are commanded to leave this world and it weighs behind. Period. Again, in verse 8, the apostle tells us why we are not, why are we to be different? This is something we need to hear this morning. We need to heed to it this morning, all of us here, including myself. After all, we are living in this world, but we are strangers and pilgrims here. That's in 1 Peter, 2 Peter, chapter, verse 1, or chapter 1, verse 11. You hear what he said, what Peter said? We're, we are strangers and pilgrims in this world. We're passing through. We don't know when that time's going to be, but I know it's getting kind of close, I think. You look around the world. Lawlessness, is, that's one of the signs. Lawlessness would be all over. Right now, lawlessness is everywhere. While we are strangers and pilgrims in this world, there was a time when we were citizens of this world. Remember the time when you were a citizen before you got saved? Let me ask you a question. Before you got saved, how did you act? Now, I ask you today, you're, you're saved. How are you acting now? Is there a difference? Truthfully, is there a difference? He said, well, I, I pray when we come to church. That's what I pray. I read my word when we come to church. Really. Then you don't want a relationship with him. You want everybody to think you're cool. You want everybody to think that you're religious. I told you this was not going to be a lovely message this morning. We live like they are. We live like they live. We thought like they think. We did what they did. We were part of them, the world. You were part of the world when you didn't give your heart to Jesus. But I ask you the same question again. Is it the, the way how you was back then? Does it look about pretty close to the same you are now? Then you ain't in Jesus Christ. I'm just telling you like, telling you like it is. You're playing a game. That game will cause you to go to hell. Any no other way. But when we were saved by grace, by the grace of God, we were delivered from our old life of sin and we were given a new life of righteousness. Amen. Whew, I'm glad I like that. While we were delivered from the world, we still possess a deep familiar familiar familiarness with the word and it's all and it is it's all and its ways, excuse me. There's still a part of us this morning. Whoops. That fleshly part, that still, that still, that, that desire, the things of the world we left behind. But when we're saved and beyond that, there is a pressure on all of us. Every one of us here this morning, when we gave gave up those things, you know, sometimes we're, after we're saved, we kind of mingle with some of that stuff, you know. Not really touch it yet, but we're mingling with it. It won't be long. You'll be touching. You'll be right back where you was. Are you hearing me? you got to make the change. I can't make the change for you. you got to make the change, church. There's always pressure for the saints of God to be more like the world around them. There is pressure all the time. It's everywhere. How many know when you, you, you ask the Lord to take care of an issue in your life and you, He's got it took care of? How many know that that, that that world out here on the outside will begin to mess with your head? Trying to get you to go back to where you was. We all know that. But that pressure is where we're to step up. That's where we're supposed to stand up. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Say no. When you're praying, I do it all the time. 
Some people might not do that, but when I pray, I tell that whatever it is, go to hell. Go back to hell where you came from. Ain't nothing wrong with that. We got authority. You understand? We have authority over all that crap. Every bit of it, you have authority through the power of the Holy Spirit. You have, you have, you have power. But the question is, do you want to? That's where it comes down to. Sometimes there's things hard to give up. I'm guilty. If I come up here and preach the only what I was perfect in, oh, you'd never get loud, I'd never be able to preach. I'm just a man like you guys. I'm just a man like you. There's, there is an overwhelming pressure from the advertisement you see around, from the entertainment and other forms of media. How I many not media are to be thrown in trash? I hate these phones when they come in. I thought they were supposed to be used for just emergency, but no. Right now they're being used to seduce our children, seduce you into doing things you shouldn't be doing. Period. That's what they do. I hate them phones. There's no world pressure on that. Yeah. And other forms of media for us to do what the world does. If you got kids, they got a cell phone, you better make sure you got parental locks on it. Period. Because if you don't, I guarantee you they're looking at stuff they shouldn't be looking at. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Too much pressure on them. Too much pressure on them. Think of it that way rather than being bad. It's a pressure on those kids. They have to make a decision. They're young. Some of the kids are real young. It's getting phone. They have to make a decision. Do I want to do right or wrong? The pressure's on them, guys. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But you have a way to eliminate that pressure for them. Oh, they're not going to like it. I can promise you that. You don't want to get over it. Or they won't get a phone. Make a choice. You have to make a stand, church, with your children, these dead young phones. You've got to make a stand. They're destroying our babies. Everywhere. They're destroying our babies. There's a subtle pressure, if even from people who love, who would like to see us behave a little more like them. There's pressure. We go into someone play, playing cards or, or having just a good old time. There's a pressure on you from the people who are lit with you that's not living in Christ to come back to you, come back to us. Come on, come back and be friends again. There's a huge pressure for that. They would like to see us do the things they do. These folks do what they do because our lifestyle makes them feel guilty. Our lifestyle makes them feel guilty. It should make them feel guilty, by the way. I remember a long time ago with Vicky when I first married Vicky. Hallelujah, we've been married 30 years. <laughs> yeah. Yep. 30 years, that's a long time. But we went to one of her family gatherings. Right after we got married, I hadn't been married to him too long, to her. About two years, I think. I didn't know her family that well. So we was over at the park somewhere. No, it was in a, in a uh, uh, facility that they let you use on them on them places where there's uh, condos and stuff. You know, they got a building for pool and all that stuff in. That's where it was at. And they turned the movie on. They said, let's sit down and watch a movie. I sit down. I said, I ain't watching this thing. I got up and left. They got mad. And they all call themselves Christians. Who's ostracized for it for years? Okay. Whatever. I'm just not going to watch that crap. <laughs> okay. But we, we, there's a pressure. We make them feel guilty about the way we're living. We should. That's in Romans 12, verses 1 through 2. I'm going to read it. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living, holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Notice that should be something you do no matter what. I mean, it's that easy, that simple. But if you're not reading your word and you're not in the Holy Ghost, you're not going to do it. Read that. That's, that's cool. You need to read that scripture carefully. Study it out. It'll amaze you what it is. It will amaze you. Verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. What time is it? 
11.53? Oh, good thing. I cut the down here and said 12.53. I said, ah, that one went over. I'm about an hour. Their pressure from within and it, as the flesh reaches out for these things that are now forbidden to you. We might be saved, but there's still a part of all of us that loves sin and that hates the idea of holiness. While there's pressure to go back, there's also pressure to go forward. Isn't that right? There is. Just as surely as the flesh and the word world belongs for us to be conformed to its ways, the Spirit of God and the Word of God wants us to be transformed so that we might be what God saved us to be. That's in Galatians 6, uh, 5, 16, 17. Now here, here's the place right here. Um, this that's only that's only a part of it. I can quit right now and finish it. But if you're talking another 30 minutes, finish it. I'm telling you up front. Doesn't look like there's an idea to finish it. Okay, that's good. Okay. Everybody stand with me at your feet, please. Everybody put your hands up. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.